In this tutorial, we cover the basics of creating 2D and 3D shapes using the drawing tools located in the third row of the modeling tools. We can select an open shape such as a vector line, spline curve, and arc. Or we can select a closed shape such as a rectangle, polygon, circle, or ellipse. Located in the second row are the object type icons. These determine if the shape you draw will remain flat as a 2D entity or whether it will be extruded to become a 3D object. An important concept to remember is that you must always select one drawing tool and one icon from the object type modifiers to create a shape. All drawing is controlled by the object type modifier. Also notice the object type modifiers have a teal background while the drawing tools we clicked on a moment ago have a gray background. The colors differentiate between tools and the gray and the modifiers in the teal or magenta. We shall first generate rectangles and cubes. Select the rectangle drawing tool. Let's say we want our rectangle to remain flat, so select the 2D surface icon. Click two points and observe that the cursor automatically tracks on the reference plane. Also notice that after the second click, the rectangle remains a 2D flat surface. Now let's say we want to create an extruded rectangle. So select the 3D extrusion icon and click two points. Observe the rectangle extrudes to a predefined height. Within Form Z, the sixth menu located at the top of the screen is the display menu. Here there are a number of options that you can choose that determine how your project is displayed while working interactively as well as final renderings. Note that the two shapes we have generated thus far, the 2D flat surface and the 3D extrusion, are in wireframe mode. This is the default display mode for Form Z. The second interactive display mode, located directly beneath wireframe in the display menu, is interactive shaded. This mode is an OpenGL based shaded rendering, and we will be working in this mode for the remainder of the tutorial. Now select interactive shaded from the display pull down menu. Find the prompts palette in the lower left corner of the modeling window. This is where numeric information can be read and input for your object can be entered. Create another box and observe the numeric feedback displayed in this palette. Notice that the 3D rectangles extruded thus far have been at a predefined height. To set the height value of any extruded object, select the Heights pull-down menu. We can choose a preset value from the list provided or choose Graphic to dynamically define the height. Select the Graphic option now. With the Rectangle tool still active, click two points to define the rectangle. Since we set the Heights pull-down menu to Graphic, the rectangle doesn't automatically extrude. We must move the mouse forward and backward to dynamically define the height. Click a third time to complete the extrusion. We have now observed how the Graphic option functions. For the following steps, we would like the shapes we generate to be of the same height. Click on the Heights pull-down menu and revert back to the default height of 10 feet. For the next step, we'll want to work with an empty reference plane. Our rectangles from the previous steps are still visible, so let's remove them from the scene. This can be accomplished from the Edit pull-down menu. Select Undo four times from the Edit pull-down menu, or use the key shortcuts Command and Z from Macintosh, or Control z for Windows to undo your previous actions. There are unlimited undos in Form Z. Let's use the Vector Line tool to create an open shape. Select the Vector Line Drawing tool and click a few points to start the shape. Note that the Object Type modifier is still at Extrude. Double-click the mouse or hit the E key to end the shape. Now let's use the Vector Line tool to create a closed shape. Click a few points to start the shape. Triple click the mouse or hit the C key to close the shape. An additional line is automatically added from the last point to the start point. You can also create composite shapes by selecting different drawing tools while drawing. We begin creating an extruded line with the vector line tool selected. Now let's say we want to continue our line while giving it a circular shape. To do this we have selected the arc clockwise endpoint last tool. And we will end the line with a slight curvature. To achieve this, we are using the spline cubic bezier tool. 
Note that you can access the complete FormZ user's manual by holding the shift key down and clicking any tool to learn more information on that particular tool.